this is it's uh, about restructuring of a central urban open space it is it's, it's in my city itself which is in trishur it's also uh, called it's it's also geographical center of kerala and it's also called as cultural capital of kerala okay so it's a uh, it's envisioned for sustainable development by ru ruler of uh, very old ruler ruler Ra uh, Raja Rama Varma during 1800s itself. Trishur is one of the oldest planned city in radial pattern with a central urban open space, which is a hillock with a temple on its apex, sprawling over 65 acres, and it is surrounded by highly dense built fabric, which is further enclosed by coal wetlands, which is one of the largest wetland system in Kerala. So I have got a very rich. Uh, palette with cultural and ecological significance so this is the this is the uh, view of uh, my city so it's like uh, this green patches i have shown are coal wetland area which is one of the biggest wetland system in kerala itself okay and the green the circle is my study area so how i i have actually thought about firstly i have thought about how much area to consider uh, for my study so uh, the i firstly i have pulled out all the major open spaces in my city which includes the central maidan area then on the northern area the bigger green patch is a palace complex and the southern side i have a market area then on the southern side itself there is a ra railway station area which is connected to coal wetland so i uh, so i have taken 1.5 kilometer stretch uh, 1.5 kilometer radius from the so, from the site okay that's because now i will get wet, a bit of wetland area then all the major open spaces and the maidan area central maidan area that's how i have fixed my study area i have also considered the proximity in between the op major open spaces and the walkability as well uh so firstly i have tried to figure out what is the history or what is the evolution story behind the place so there was a small temple which is called varakunadan temple at first it is uh, almost 1000 years old and uh, uh, when this temple came obviously there were other settlements also came with it there were some brahmin settlements which happened along east and west of the uh, of the um, maidan area then the palace came then the ru ruler came then the ruler wanted this place to be more economically progressive so what he did is that he invited many christians and other communities also to the uh, city and uh, thus the and the, then the market came then the railway station came thus th that's how the entire evolution started but earlier they had a lot of ponds here and the canal system connecting the wetland area so th so that there there were enough water for them they, and everything was everything w had a proper system then after 19 so 90s what happened is that railway railway came there when the railway came the canal got broken but then they were getting goods very easily because uh, and because there's a railway station right near to the market so everything was easy for them but when the canal broke its consequence is coming right now because that area is flooding these days but then they didn't realize it till now so this is basic evolution of the city the temple the uh, residents ah, also the ruler he he introduced a festival called the puram puram is a uh, for everybody it's not just for hindus it's for all the communities he wanted to bring a community communal harmony in between the residents so that their focus will be more on the uh, economic progress and the entire progress of the entire uh, in that in, and and mostly in trade and everything so that was the main intention of leaving that central open space as well then uh, so this is the background story of the city 
then i have looked at the ecological layers so basically it has a hillock profile the central area is a hillock which is around the 35 meters above the mean sea level then it gradually goes down to 1 2 5 msl that is the green patches that you see in the elevation map so you can see that central is a higher area then it gradually goes down and uh, when i did the slope analysis it was all gradual slope there was not of much issue there then i have learned the vegetation the vegetation is highly fragmented i can i could only figure out very its and bits of vegetation major typologies i identified was uh, there were native vegetation in some area that is in the central maidan area then um, the southern pal palace complex there was some native vegetation then the market area in the south area so these areas had some native vegetation other than that there were small patches of coconut plantations and uh, uh, in the cold wetland area there, there were uh, paddy fields as well so that was the major vegetation typology and uh, uh, there there were some homestead gardens as well that, that was not very significant then uh, i have tried to find out which are uh, if there are any habitat habitat areas habitat potential areas so that was majorly along the native vegetation area i've talked to to a person who watches birds and all that so he has given me this location and uh, the list of birds that he has seen in this area so inside the city major habitat zones are the maidan area palace complex and there is a zoo on the north east area so i'm not talking about the birds inside the zoo okay but the zoo is very old the complex and there are many huge and old trees so many birds actually come there then there is one in the southern side is a market area there also uh, there's a, a cluster of native vegetation so birds also come there as well then in the cold wetland area it's very rich with avi fauna it's uh, there are many i have detailed detail i have given the list and the details in my thesis sheets i am i am i haven't put any of it here to bore you so these are the major habitat zones that uh, habitat zones that i have identified then this is the water uh, drainage system there right now they have drainages open drainages along the roads but when i looked at the basin and natural drainage system it's like from the center it will radially goes towards the wetland area so since it uh, you guys have saw the profile right it's like a hillock what will happen when the water fall on a hill it will naturally flow towards the wetland area so actually according to the topography of this area water will naturally drain off but still we have water logging issues in some areas do you know why because towards that uh, north eastern area they have uh, it's actually wetland area but then people are filling it up and constructing there which causes water logging it's, it's very insensitive then again i had looked at the ground water prospect of the area i can see a visible variation in between the wetland area and the built area in the built area earlier there were so many ponds to recharge the water and there were canals to take away the excess water but right now the old canals are uh, filled with overgrown vegetation or it is broken because of roads and the ponds are mostly filled up there are barely 3 4 ponds in the city right now as every because the land is more precious to them I, they didn't even even think about the ground water recharge or anything because of that one then i have done a, uh, i have studied uh, i try to pull out what are the cultural major cultural paths along the city there there were uh, because of this temple there is so many processions happen and uh, there are there, there is the culture, that's the cultural uh, circulation route then the route of local tourist and the international tourist that and all that you you guys know then the visual analysis and the heritage mapping and the data composite which is not very important but then that is there then uh, these are the sectional views of the area with uh, the section through municipal road is the view of the hillock and the temple then you can see how the roads are actually it's very much uh, cluttered with uh, 
electric lines and the building and the road vehicles and people it's it's all cluttered right now so this is central open space but everything around is congested and cluttered so uh, after doing all this i have uh, made a composite map a compose in this composite map i've tried to merge all the layers all the ecological and cultural layers i have identified so uh, when i overlaid my natural drainage lines and uh, existing green patches i have found very interesting things this you see this green hatched areas those are potential ecological corridors because most of the green patches that i could uh, figure out uh, or find out from the city fabric they are on the way of on the drainage on the along the path of the natural drainage which gives us a Uh, potential that we can, if we provide a buffer zone along those lines, we can actually develop it as ecological corridor, which could be developed as a linear park or something, so that the it will be helpful for the city people as well. Not just it will not be just a canal or something. Then I have marked major uh, cultural zone. Uh, by uh, connecting all the major open areas and uh, all the major cultural routes i have marked that is a different zone so there are two zones i i was able to pull out from this map ecological corridor and the cultural zone in this itself i have marked major flood zones conflict area major connectivities vantage points then erosion prone area water ponds and everything okay so which gives us a whole picture so i i actually didn't know that there is a relation between the existing fragmented vegetative patches and the drainages until i made this composite map okay so this was my proposed uh, uh, network it's a uh, uh, the vision was a sustainable development of urban open space network by reconnecting the major open areas inside the city with peripheral wetland area so as to augment the ecological and the cultural value of the city i want to i wanted to augment both so what i did is like i proposed the pedestrian linkages which connects the major areas that is vanjikulam market area then the maidan area palace complex and the Museum, then natural trails along the wetland and the natural drainages and coconut plantation. Then there are visual corridors, then buffers for the natural drainages, canal rejuvenation. Then flood prevention methods. As there are floods, though I have proposed the buffer zone along the old existing ponds so that it can be. it can it it can be it it will be help it will help to increase the groundwater reaches and also microclimate uh, it will em enhance the microclimate and habitat enhancement and also the pond rejuvenation and open space development also comes as a part of my uh, program okay these are the policies and guidelines that i have come up with so i have identified networks different types of network some one is completely pedestrian other one with vehicular road with pedestrian friendly edges then uh, i have suggested that areas with more than 50 percentage of canopy coverage shouldn't be altered within the study area as these are the only patches available which carry significant role in enhancing the microclimate of the city center especially along the ecological corridor and all the existing ponds should be maintained and with and minimum 15 meter vegetated buffer should be provided around all the all around excluding the heritage structures in the vicinity then vegetated buffer of minimum 15 meter should be provided along the existing canals and streams and also the identified potential natural drainages so the these things you, i think most of you can easily do this then uh, propose the ponds along the natural streams which can be designed as sangan paths which can also access flood basin during the monsoon rains then the um, centralization of activities so that uh, along the temple it can be passive activities and the active activities can be along the uh, market area and the palace and other open spaces these are some sectional views which explains these policies okay then i have gone to my site so 
the site is 65 acre open space why i took this site is because it is the primary open space in the first place then it is one of the major habitat area then uh, its visual significance and the accessibility it's along the primary circulation road then the, it's one of the major cultural center of the city and the community engaged in number of activities which happens along this open space so this is some what it looks like so after studying then then i have done a detailed study of the site which i have not included in this presentation so i did all the um, natural layer study and the cultural study and everything what is the activity pattern who all are the user group everything in that site then i have came up with the program and strategy to proceed this so which the program included con conservation of the topography it's a hillock which is exposed to wind and sun and rain so i can see visible roots of the huge trees which shows a huge amount of soil erosion which has to be addressed in the design then reconnecting with nature because the city had this uh, culture of uh, uh, culture of having a having a um, water related activities like community activities along the ponds which which is which is long gone if now the ponds are just ornamental or just aesthetical element which i wanted to bring back and also if we address it properly water biospheres and everything can help to control the surface runoff and manage the flooding in the city then again ecological enhancements uh, so basically uh this is maidan is one of the area with the native vegetation so which has to be conserved and this area has a wide variety of avifauna when i talked to a person he said there were more than 13 variety of owls in this area so ecologically it's very sensitive even though it is within the city fabric this area has a high ecological value then urban green corridors because uh, it's the because of the temple the temple in the center and surrounded by uh, highly thick built fabric the sanctity of the place has got compromised a lot so which can bring back by using urban green corridors so that the noise can be reduced uh, the birds and avifauna can be brought back like because green patches green corridors can connect the patches which can in which can enhance the habitat then uh, decentralization of activities and coexistence okay so what i did is that i have defined the relation between ecology and culture in each zone okay so my conceptual idea was uh, to reconnect the existing ecological and cultural realm so here the city has very strong cultural significance as well as the ecological significance and both are a threat so i wanted to reconnect these two and complement each other but uh, the dependency or relation between these will vary in each zone so i have categorized it uh and in my design i have suggested to make a 200 meter radius from the central area should be pedestrianized with zero vehicle vehicle inside and uh, i have proposed the ring road also along it uh so i'll explain the zones first so the outermost zone the pedestrian linkage it uh, will be a culture or human dominant area Where ecology will be just a supporting element. Then comes the public edge. Public edge comes to the right around the maidan area. It will have a um, it will have human activities which are complemented by ecology. That means there will be ecology or vegetation on plants and everything will support the human activity. There it will not generate any activity. okay then next zone is spiritual zone where ecology supports the cultural activities because ecology will be the major or dominant element there but the other activities like uh, prayer meditation other passive activities will also be there which which will come as a part of uh, ecology then uh, sacred grove area also 
so this is how i did the basic zoning and then i have proposed to some activities from my study so the central temple com temple complex then there is sacred garden around then, then there are two ponds chandra pushkarini and surya pushkarini then there is elephant yard then i proposed some notes to enhance the legibility then i proposed a sacred grove also within the area then nursery outdoor gym area because many people come in the morning and evening for walks and everything then the mandapam pavement cycle track these are the activities i pulled out by studying the area by looking at the activities and everything and for the vegetation i have zoned it into three major typologies the within the temple and the surroundings it will have all the sacred trees like ficus and huge and large trees in a very dense high with high density and right around it will be a zone with the medium density it will have a, a less density or high canopy trees then the uh, edge area will have more of ornamental trees and which which uh, which has more visual or ornamental quality than those uh, than a habitat than being a habitat or a huge tree so so these are the sectional views which shows the, the transition in between so you can see that you, along the building edge the tree size will be less it will be mostly uh, mostly ornamental in nature and the, towards the temple edge it will be more thick and huge trees and these are some other sectional views which shows so basically my learning from this by doing this thesis is that urban open spaces are key elements for sustainable development of a city so right now thrissur city fabric is it's not too tight it's uh, it's uh, yeah it's like this there, there are still small 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 green open uh, pockets which can be actually linked and we can we have the possibility to create an intact green network it it will help the city in many ways microclimate is one major re reason and it will enhance the ecology ecological condition environment within the city so there are many many benefits which we need to address and also in city the major issue is that the groundwater groundwater or in in most of our cities water is getting washed away and ultimately it, it will go to the sea and sea water is rising every year it is rising so we don't have enough water with us for drinking or our utility utility purpose so these open spaces are can help us to increase the groundwater recharge eff effectively very effectively if we use it properly so these are the, the urban open space has high potential to address so much of these issues flooding natural hazards climate likewise the environment within the city all this can be regulated um so that is it and i i am very glad to say that my thesis this this work is uh, getting um as in it it is happening actually in, uh, i have uh, presented it in front of intac and the uh, uh, temple uh, community it's called the devaswam board and they have approved it so it might happen sometime soon so that is it um that's that's really good to hear. Congrats for that. And it's okay. really an um, insightful session. We could actually able to establish the connection with the issue and the surroundings and how to how we go yeah. about it to address it mm -hmm. in a and um, sensitive way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if anyone has any questions, doubts, or want to share something, you can share. Hello. Yes. Yes, uh, Raya. 
Uh, hi, uh, hi, ma'am. Um, actually, I have a doubt, uh, some doubts regarding, and it was very related to my topic which we are doing in studio right now. So uh, I had, I had a doubt like how these fragmented urban open spaces and these drainage connections, how are they interlinked, and how can we interlink them if they are not? Um, so. Okay, so you are asking me your urban open spaces are not connected to your drainage, natural drainage. Is uh -huh, it like yeah. that? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so in my case, uh, in my case, it was linked so that that's why I was able to develop it, okay, as a green corridor because I had that space. If we don't have that, uh, like that, that is the problem with many cities. Uh, mm -hmm. If we if we don't have that uh, uh, that potential then we will have to go with some other ways since in in my case there was already fragmented patches and uh, waterway in the same place which uh, which is because mostly because our forefathers or our higher generation our older generation they knew that this is a waterway so if they have the coconut plantation here they can they can water it easily okay or they can get they, that that land will be wet more than compared to the other area so they might have looked at all those factors while having the coconut plantation in those areas maybe that's why i have got it like that but it but in yeah. some cities it might not be possible in those cases mm -hmm. we will have to develop it as in we will have to uh, demolish and uh, develop a natural corridor if it is that important otherwise we can't revive or we can't do anything the only some mm -hmm. it, like i said in my city there is potential because it's not completely built which area are you guys dealing with uh, nagpur city Nagpur city. I haven't yeah. been there. So maybe you can look for cases like that. I mean, there are cities mm -hmm. which uh, which who which are working on this level because they are many, many cities are actually working on their green network. So you mm -hmm. can see if anybody has done similar how how people are tackling such situation or if there is no uh, open space as such in the natural drainage way then again we will have to go for artificial methods we will have to we, we can if it's if it's not proper okay. if it's not completely built then you can propose linear paths along so that both can be combined got it yes yes ma'am and um, i would also like to ask that how can we make this urban green corridors like do we make it along the road network only or do we make another path all together to connect all the fragmented spaces oh that that will be completely dependent on each case you have to see which is the most sustainable way okay in my case the sustainable way to uh, sustainable way was to link the natural drainage and the existing open spaces but in your way you'll have to see which which can be the most energy efficient way got it okay. actually uh, if the like if the place is already very crowded matlab, mm -hmm. there are already all the residential plots commercial yeah. plots there are no uh -huh. vacant open spaces to link all uh -huh. the fragmented space so in uh -huh. such scenario how how should we deal with like making the urban green corridors oh in that case, firstly, you will have to identify where all can you intervene. Okay. But it's very mm -hmm. tricky. And the roadways is one way. It, mm -hmm. it, along the road, you can develop the road and some green patches along. Because we tend to do along the road because roads are the only open spaces available in most yeah. of the cities mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. we, we, we try to have trees along the roads. That is one mm -hmm. reason. Yeah. So, uh, okay, but okay. Again, uh, yeah, you have to look at the specific case. What is our possibility that you have to identify by looking at your place itself? Okay. We cannot generalize it mm -hmm. like that. Yes. yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. so good luck, guys. And uh, th thanks a lot for inviting me to your chat series. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, yes, yes.